So for the last six months or seven months or so, I have been trying out Wayland. And I had some positive things to say about it over the course of that time. I've had some good experiences with it. I have also had negative things to say about it, of course. And I think that this time around, me going to Wayland and trying Wayland and spending all of my time on Wayland was far more successful than any other time I'd tried it before. In previous attempts, it was atrocious. It was buggy. It was basically unusable, even though I don't have a hardware setup that should be a big issue for it, or at least not technically. Like, I don't have an NVIDIA card in my system, which is usually the biggest hurdle, right? So I have given Wayland a fair chance. And even at one point, I would have told you that I was on Wayland to stay. In fact, I think I probably did say that on a video somewhere along the line. But if you've listened to some of my videos and some of the podcasts over the course of the last few weeks, you'll have noticed a little bit of dissatisfaction creeping in to my tone when it comes to talking about my setup. Now, everyone who has watched this channel knows that I have the biggest case of ADD when it comes to what I'm using ever. I'll make a video one day saying, I'm using this, and then three days later, I'm using something else. I get made fun of for it. I change my mind a lot. And I understand that. I know that it's not, you know, maybe healthy or, you know, productive or whatever. I don't care. I like to try out new things. Some of the reasons why you guys get videos on this channel is because I enjoy trying out new things. So, you know, there's a reason why I put up with my madness of switching back and forth between things, but also it's just kind of the way that I am. I enjoy changing new thing, changing to do into new workflows and to try new technologies and even things that I've tried before I like to return to. Now, I've talked about this on the podcast. I've talked about it in a blog post where I, after using desktop environments for six months or so, maybe a little bit shorter than that, but for a good few months, I had some hankering to go back to a window manager. And as I've talked about, I've tried many times to go to Hyperland because Hyperland is like the Wayland window manager. I know we're not supposed to call them that, but I don't care. It's a window manager, whatever. Right. I, I, and I've tried it many times. And every time I do, there's just these little pain points that keep me from enjoying it as much as I should. Things that just don't work the way that they're supposed to, whether it's Wayland's fault or Hyperland's fault or not, right? So more recently, the thing that's bothered me about my time on Wayland has been that Crusader just doesn't work well on Wayland. And Crusader is my favorite Linux app ever. I've made videos about it probably more than anybody else ever. I love Crusader. I really don't want to do without it. I have tried other file managers and Thunar is fine and I can put up with Nemo and, and a couple of the others. They're, they're okay, but they're not Crusader and I like Crusader and I want to use Crusader, but <laughs> how many times can I say Crusader in the same sentence? The point is, is that I want to use it and I want it to work well and it doesn't on Wayland. Now, some of that is because the Crusader folks haven't done a good job of making it actually work well on Wayland. It's more of an application fault than Wayland itself. You can't really blame Wayland for it, but I'm going to anyways. <laughs> like, like, I want to use this application, but it doesn't work well on the technology. So I have found myself over the course of the last week or so going back to Xorg. And I, like I said, I thought I was done with Xorg. I was an Xorg shill, then I made the jump, and I thought I was just done with Xorg. But, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. So, I have used i3 and Qtal over the course of the last week or so. Maybe even two weeks. It's, been, it's probably been closer to two weeks. And I have to say this. Xorg's really good, guys. And I remember now why I shilled for it for so long and told that told everyone that I was never going to leave it behind. In fact, I believe I said at one point that you could pry Xorg out of my cold, dead fingers. I really liked Xorg for a while, and Wayland kind of lulled me into a sense of I don't know. It's it uh, it, it just made me think. It made me, it was good enough where I was able to overlook some of its deficiencies. Let me put it that way. I think that's a PC, PC way of putting it. And I was able to overlook the things that were wrong with it because there was always something minutely wrong with it. Like if you're on Plasma, 
K1 was going to crash all the time, but I was able to overlook that because K1 has always crashed even on Xorg, right? It's not, that's not a new problem. It just has a new cause. And then actually on Wayland, when K1 crashes, it actually does a better job on Wayland because, you know, it just pops right back up at least most of the time, right? So it wasn't that big a deal. And yeah, KDE has its own Wayland bugs and Gnome has its own Wayland bugs, but I was able to overlook them. Because for the most part, the experience was pretty good. I really enjoyed not having to worry about screen tearing ever. It was pretty cool. But those little things over time added up and slowly crept into a sense of dissatisfaction with what I was using. Now, some of that was because, as I talked about, I was just done with desktop environments and I wanted to go back to a window manager. And on the Wayland side of window managers, they're just not any good ones. At least, I mean, all right, hold on a second. Let me put that a different way. There are not any ones that I like that are good and not somewhat buggy. So <laughs> there, there's that, that way of putting it. So I decided I was going to try Xorg again. And it is good. Yes, there's screen tearing. Yes, you have to do the workarounds in order to get that to go away. You have to use PyCom in order for, at least the, my solution for it is just to use VSync with PyCom. Works, works like a charm. And I don't have to worry about it after I set it up, right? So, yeah, it's, there's some hoops that I had to go through in order to get things to work. But I was able to set up all three of my monitors. And, yeah, I had to make them all 1080p, which is fine. I don't care about the higher resolution on the other two monitors anyways. I always did that on on uh, Wayland 2, so, and that's not that big of a deal. And once I got that set up and everything was working, my experience of the last two weeks has been flawless. And yes, I know Xorg is a dying technology and it's not being maintained anymore and it's a security nightmare and yada, 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 yada. I understand, but from a user perspective, Xorg still rocks. It is so good. Every application that you want to use, that at least is, that wasn't specifically written for Wayland, I should say, works. Like OBS, for example. I've had multitude of problems over the course of the last six or seven months as I was using Wayland, where for whatever reason, the portal that Xorg or that OBS was using just stopped doing window capture for whatever reason. Like, the other, yeah, like actually, yesterday when I was doing the podcast, I was in Hyperland for just a little while because I thought, you want to, now that I'm back into the, the, the window manager scene, maybe I can go make Hyperland actually work. I was going to give it a try. You know, maybe... It wasn't Xorg that I was so you know happy with. Maybe it was just the fact that I'm back in a window manager. I'm away from a desktop environment. I'm, I can make anything work and it's going to be happy. But I went into Hyperland and lo and behold, OBS would not capture a window. Now, that's a possibility that the reason why that wouldn't work was because of me switching back and forth between Xorg and Wayland. That's possible. But the idea here is, isn't that there's not a good reason why something doesn't work. It's just that it didn't work. Right. Like I went back to Xorg and it worked perfectly fine. We did the whole podcast on it last night. It worked great. So there's always just those little things like usually I can fix them. I can restart the portal. I can switch to a different portal. I can restart the computer, you know, whatever happens, you know, whatever solution there may be. It usually would usually work, but I don't want to have to do any of those things because I want just my I want my shit to work. And I don't think that that's asking too much. Right. And, and usually Wayland worked okay but there was just every once in a while there was those things that just wouldn't and that led me to try xorg and it's just been so damn good now i know that this video is mostly fucking pointless i most of my videos are pointless these days i don't know why i feel like that but the, the point is, is that the xorg overall has been phenomenally good uh, setting up the monitors getting rid of the screen tearing was fairly easy because PyCom still remains just really really solid yes it crashes from time to time but what doesn't uh and actually i think i've only had one crash the entire time and that was because i just did something wrong and restarted it and it wasn't supposed to restart or something like that it was it was more of a, of a user error than an actual flaw in the program so I am phenomenally happy being back on Xorg. Now, I've been showing you guys some B-roll over the course of the, me, you know, yapping. What you're seeing is me in Qtile. And, yes, that is an awesome setup. I will freely admit that that's one of my better rices. I've had such a good time over the course of the last two weeks. Just, you know, I, I've been scripting more. I had gotten away from that. I've been, you know, obviously racing more i know you're not supposed to use racing anymore i guess theming more i guess is what you're supposed to say you know I, i've been doing all these things I, my 
happiness with my system is at a high right now. Now, I'm sure something will happen that will make it go down, whether that's X org or not. But and part of it is just me returning to a window manager because I miss that, you know, very much. But also just having a system that works is great. So here's the bottom line. Every seven or eight months or so, I make a video asking myself, is Wayland ready for their everyday regular Joe Smo user? And the last one that I made, my answer to that question was yes. And I still believe that's the answer. Like, yes, for the most part, Wayland is ready for everyday use for the vast majority of people. In fact, the vast majority of people who use Linux right now are using Wayland, whether they know it or not. And that's the way that it should be. But, as there usually is, there's a button there. When it comes to window managers, Wayland's not ready yet. Like, it's not. Portals still can break. But also, until there's a lot of window managers for me to choose from, I'm not going to be happy. And I think that the reason why that's the case is because when there's a lot of window managers to, to go around, a lot of that work gets pulled, right? Now, maybe that won't happen on the Wayland side, but at least on Xorg side, DWM spawned everything, right? <laughs> it seems like that, like awesome window managers based on DWM, Xmonad based on DWM, you know, Qtel, I wouldn't be surprised if there's some DWM stuff in there. I don't actually know. But the point is, is that all the window managers got to, you know, saw how other window managers were doing things and they took ideas and they started just to you know, actually make sure they could do things in certain ways. And there was innovation all over the the place. On Wayland, it's Hyperland doing all the innovation. And I don't like that, right? I, that, that to me just bodes not good, especially when Hyperland is basically in the control of one guy. Now, I'm sure I, I whether you have uh, thoughts on Vaxry or not, I don't pers personally know the guy. I don't personally care whatsoever. Uh, you know, by his politics or his behavior or whatever. I, I don't care. But when it comes, like, if a project is in the control of one developer, if that developer either it gets pushed out or it decides to step away, what happens to the project? And, you know, some some projects like them can, you know, maintain after their creator goes away or dies. Others can't. They just get abandoned. And that worries me a little bit. Right? Now, not that I'm suggesting that Vaxer is going to die or anything. I'm just saying, like, if he decided he was going to step away from maintaining that project, it would probably be in trouble for a while. It'd probably survive, but it would make me worried. But more than that, I want other window managers out there to exist in the Wayland sphere, and they're just not there yet. So there is Qtile for Wayland, but I, as much as I love Qtile on Xorg, I don't trust Qtile for Wayland yet. Maybe that trust will come eventually. I don't know. There's River. Don't know much about it other than I know it's a really small project and uh, I just haven't tried it much yet. I'll get more into it eventually, but I, I just, again, part of the reason, and I've talked about this before, is that on Xorg, window managers have had you know, 30 years to develop themselves. Like, i3 has been around for a long time. DWM has been around for a long time. And basically all the window managers at this point have been around for a very long time. And because there's that span of years there where innovation and development could happen, we have a wide selection of options when it comes to window managers. That time hasn't been there yet for Wayland. I think eventually we'll get there. I hope that we do. And I think, but I think until that point, and as I've talked about in my other videos about this, I'm going to be dissatisfied with Wayland when it comes to window managers until we get there. Mostly that's on me. I'll be free, free to admit that. But still, I'm just kind of explaining to you why I'm at where I'm at. So I have returned to Xorg. Is it forever? I doubt it. Like, I'm sure, of, I'm sure, I'm sure I will keep... A track of Hyperland, and I'm gonna try some of the some of the other Wayland stuff. I'll probably try Wayland Qtile again. It's been a few months since I tried that. So, will I switch to, back to Wayland eventually? Probably I will. Um, I'll probably find myself switching back and forth. It'd be cool if it was easy to do, and for the most part, it is kind of. But some things like portals and stuff tend to, you know, not work well when you switch back and forth, as I've discovered. You know, so 
I'll probably switch back and forth, but as of right now, I'm very content with the way things set up, and a lot of that is because Xorg still remains really good. And, you know, judge me for that statement all you will. So, there you go. Anyways, that's it for this one. If you have thoughts on any of the stuff, you can leave those in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. Yes, I know this was a very, very rambly video. I didn't... I didn't prepare notes or anything. I was just talking off the top of my head, which is, you know, what I normally do. But anyways, if you like that kind of thing, make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and all that stuff. It really does help the channel. I do, truly do appreciate it. If you want to support me, you can do so over on Patreon at patreon.com slash the Linuxcast. There you'll find weekly exclusive podcasts where I basically just sit down and talk for 10 or 15 minutes about stuff. Usually it's Linux related, sometimes not. Uh, sometimes I talk about keyboards, you know, things like that. So uh, random, just stream of consciousness for 10 or 15 minutes. That goes to all patrons who support me. So head on over there, patreon.com slash linuxcast. You can also follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and Odyssey. You got Patreon and Kofi and YouTube. <laughs> I'm a new guy. Anyways, you are all very awesome. Thank you so very much for your support. I truly truly do appreciate it you guys again are awesome thank you so very very much thanks everybody for watching uh, uh, i probably should mention the store shop at the there you go awesome merch thanks everybody for watching uh, matt flood the ending again i'll see you next time <laughs>